I'm Patty Niebel. I'm living out here in Lake Bay. I'm originally from Kansas. From Kansas, fate took me to Alaska for a long time. And then after that, we came to Washington, lived in Seattle for 30 years, something like that, and then got sick of the city and got an opportunity to retire and get ourselves a place where you had a little more breathing space. I've been doing art since I went to college. Prior to that, my mom and I were always really creative. We were always doing some kind of creative project together. But I don't think either one of us uh, would have called ourselves an artist at that time. I know I didn't because I felt like, well, if, if you weren't born with an innate ability to draw very well, then you can't be an artist. But I learned that that's not true. Uh, what you really need are good teachers. I was interested in more of a three-dimensional approach to art than you get from uh, painting or drawing. The Greeks are the first folks who freed the figure from the stone. They showed the distribution of weight from different, uh, into different points. And in so doing, they could also then free up the arms and the movement in the middle of the body from this very almost pillar-like representation to figures of incredible passion. I was unfortunately, the ones I was the most interested in were big, really big. I didn't feel like I had the studio space or the ability or the equipment to ever do anything that size. And so I diverted myself into ceramics and have never looked back. You know, you have like two or three real basic methods of approaching ceramics. And uh, they basically you throw them on the wheel so that everything is round or a derivative of round. Uh, or you slab build it, which you see here and I'll probably show us in a little bit. Or you build it out of coils or you pinch it. Just take your fingers and pinch it. That's how we all started as kids in grade school. I think the very best pieces of ceramics are the ones that combine two or more of those processes. Here's a bowl, for instance, that this is a slab built piece up through here, but the foot is thrown. And then on top of that, things are have been appliqued around the outside, and then you see that uh, there's some coil and some pinch parts also. I'm working on a series of great big pots right now, and this one is built out of coils. So those are little snakes you ruled out as a kid when you were in grade school. Um, but clearly it's been smoothed over and you can't see that part. And in addition to that, it will have a collar added so that when completed, it'll look something like that. It is a hands-on experience in the true sense of the word. And now that's also funny to say because there's so much equipment that goes with, with ceramics. Um, there's the kilns and the wheels and the, this process requires that and that process requires this. I do uh, a fair amount of raku firing, which is an entirely different kiln. That process is a, was originally a Japanese process. You're firing your pot until it is white hot. And then you take it out of the kiln while it's hot. You put it into a container that has a combustible material in it, such as grass clippings, straw, newspaper, any of those kinds of things. And then that stuff, because your pot is still really hot, immediately catch fire and flame up and then you smother it. And you've created a, like a smoking den in there. Uh, it gets black smudges all over the outside and those are called smoke clouds. You get a really metallic look too. You cannot, however, use Raku for um, anything that you expect to hold water or food. Uh, the glazes and the uh, chemicals released by the smoke they're not good for us. We don't want to eat that stuff. I was teaching a adult clay class um, for six weeks, all skill levels. We'll just experiment with whatever you're really kind of interested in doing. 
I have also taught um, homeschool children in basic clay. I don't know who said it, but somebody said it, that uh, the teacher learns as much from the class as the class learns from the teacher. And boy, do I believe that's true. I have over the years in my home studio, both in Seattle and here, I've had an apprentice. Uh, it's a really good way for some young person to learn some of the arts of ceramic, uh, as well as to get some studio time when they may not be able to have the, use the equipment themselves. So we'll make a small slab piece while we're talking this morning. And you will have rolled out the clay to the proper thickness. The first firing that you do on the clay is called a uh, bisque firing. So right now what you have is, is wet clay. You wouldn't put that in the kiln. You want it to be thoroughly dry. And then you take a rib, these are ribs, and they come in wood. This one is a flexible rubber. They also come in plastic. Just by using it to smooth down the top, the top was already pretty smooth, but this will help prevent it from warping as it warms up. And then um, I've got a mold. I'm gonna put it over this mold. So that tells you how big I want it to be. And then we'll cut it out. Cut it out using a needle tool. Uh, you gotta be careful when you're cutting it out to make sure that you're going straight down and not slanting. So I make a lot of my own stamps for impressions. This was a living sunflower. Um, here's a flower that I created. Here's an octopus out of a coloring book. Uh, here's stamps that I got at the craft show, craft shops. How about we do this one? We'll do an evergreen. And you just want to make sure that it is evenly distributed so your impression is the same depth on the pot. And then the stamp is removed carefully. And there you go. We have an evergreen tree on our piece. I'm going to put it on my mold, but it's going to go face down so that when you have this piece on your table, you can see that evergreen tree. So you just work this down gently. As it dries, it may very well want to come up some more and you work it down gently again. <laughs> This would probably be totally dry and ready to fire in about a week. You want it to dry evenly, so when I put that in some place to dry, I will, I will tint it with plastic. To throw a pot on a wheel, the first thing you have to do is center it, which means you've got to get your hunk of clay in the very middle of the wheel head. And it is unfortunately, for the beginning person, that is the hardest thing to do in the whole clay making process. I have, basically I centered. And now I'm opening it up. And you do that by putting in one finger at a time until you've, there is a hole that will form the center of your bowl or your pot. You want to open it up down to oh, about one finger length from the top of the wheel head, but you're making that decision on the inside and that's kind of tricky. So what I often tell my students is open it up and pull it out to you where you can see what's going on a little bit and measure it with your needle tool. And you do that by just putting the needle tool straight down into the bottom and then running your finger down to where it runs into the clay. So my bottom is now this thick. And that's pretty good, um, especially for beginning folk. If you were doing a real fine porcelain, that's too thick. But we can also trim a little bit off. That's, that's your secret weapon. And I'm gonna to continue to open this pot up, making the hole bigger, 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 bigger. 
So my pressure right now is on the inside and the water forms the lubricant, so you don't want to let it go dry. Okay, so now I'm going to have to apply pressure to the inside and the outside because I want this pot to come up, but I also want it to flare out. So basically we're pinching it. But note how I've braced my hands so they can't move and so that they can't pinch it shut. You don't want any. If you do that, you'll have irregular thickness in your walls and then your pot will not dry uh, evenly. And then you open yourself up to, to cracks and warping again. Now I'm gonna to rise it up. And so my pressure this time is on the outside and the inside is a stable point. Uh, there's no pressure on the inside. Another trick is, is you want to keep that pressure even all the way up the wall. Uh, we have a tendency when we want to start to pinch it right about here. Pretty soon you could pinch that whole top right off. Make another pass. It's important to make several passes. Um, as many as you need to get the height up. And our lip is really thick, so we could do something fancy with that. Like maybe we should turn it out. I'm just going to gently press this on the inside. I'm going to do that with a sponge so that uh, it doesn't dry out and start to drag. It's a pretty nice little pot. You could do just about anything with that, I think. And you cut it loose from the bat. And you use a wire cutter to do that. And what you're doing, you're not going to move it at this point. It's too wet. But you're introducing a little layer of air molecules that help it start to dry out. So I'll show you some of the completed work that I've got out there in the marketplace right now. Um, these are little, they're olive boats. It's just a lovely box. It's based on a Greek shape from the ancient times called the crater. And they would make these large, deep bowls with a high stem. And that's what this is. And this is also a Raku piece up here on the top. And it's a highly metallic. Um, this, there's a glaze that I put on that does this. I have um, knitting bowls. A number of my friends requested these, so I did a bunch of those. And a cornucopia for a Thanksgiving table. These little sauce dishes that, that I use all the time in my house and in the studio both, they're just so handy. This little pot is like a, a tomato pot, but I added a treatment to the glaze to make it um, separate and be irregular like that. This is a slab build piece with impressions overall. It's a monoprint. I slab built the pot. It has a coiled foot and this is Im impressions and um, monoprint designs that you in monoprinting you put the design on one surface and then you transfer it to another but it will only transfer once here's a metallic slab built piece this is a a bread bowl a french bread pan and this is slab built and coil built base I am displaying here in Key Center. I'm up at the Hosey Cottage Keepsakes.